Hi, good afternoon. I'd like to welcome you to Poem Praise 2, and I do thank you for tuning in. Peace and blessings be upon you and your family this afternoon. Now, we are going to get right back into the names of God. Right now, we are on chapter 8. The Lord is our righteousness. Jehovah Tesikanu. This is take two of this chapter. So without further ado, it goes like this. Corrupt leadership. Lay people are not the only ones who ignore God's commands. Even spiritual mm -hmm. leaders, the so-called anointed of the Lord, can be guilty of disobeying God's law. And when spiritual leaders fall into sin, they pay the same price, death. At one of the telethons for our TV station in Miami, a precious Christian couple came to me, Brother Soma. Will you pray for us? They pleaded. We belong to one of the largest churches in Southern Florida and our pastor has been caught in adultery. Three women in the congregation have given sign statements that the pastor has committed adultery with them. He wants to, to have a business meeting with him tonight to discuss these things. But we don't know what to do. Tears were running down their cheeks. I would guess they were in their 50s. Handsomely dressed, and they were on their way to the important meeting with their pastor. The situation was grievous. God expects the leaders of his church to live clean, righteousness lives before his people. Christians must have holy leaders. And when we don't have them, the Bible says, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. Jeremiah 23, 1 and 2. God will not leave his church in the hands of corrupt leaders. He will not let ungodly men and women pervert the morals of his people. Not by any means. Notice what God says in the same passage. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto you, David, a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Verse 5, the branch, of course, is Jesus Christ. He has fulfilled this prophecy in one sense by being born from the lineage of David. But the real thrust of his prophecy will be fulfilled when Christ returns to rule the world. He will snatch the church from the hands of every ungodly leader who pretends to be leading her in his name. He will expose these frauds for who they really are and give them their just reward. In his days, Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Verse 6. What a majestic thought. The Lord, our righteousness, 
All heaven and earth will rejoice in his righteousness. All people will realize that any righteousness Christians have is merely the imputed righteousness of Christ. See Romans 4, 13 through 25. They will know that he is Jehovah Tesekanu, the Lord our righteousness. This is the name God's people will use to hail Christ when he returns. The rest of Jeremiah 23 presents a sad commentary on human society. For it predicts that both prophet and priest will become morally profane. For both prophet and priest are profane. Yeah, in my house have I found their wickedness, saith the Lord. Wherefore, the way shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness, they shall be driven on and fall therein. For I will bring evil upon them. Jeremiah 23, 11 and 12. I believe there is a tremendous amount of sin in the pulpits of America today. Hmm. God, however, wants to become our righteousness. He wants to give us the holiness that we can never achieve on our own. He has already done it. He has already saved our soul from the pit of hell by sending his son, Jesus, to die in our place. Jesus' death on a cross cleanses us from, cleanses us of our moral impurity when we surrender our lives to him and say, I confess I can't live as I should. Take over my life, Lord. Make me what you want me to be. Then when we enter the gates of heaven, we won't say, we're here because we've been so good. No, we'll walk through those gates singing a new song. The Lord is our righteousness. He has made everything right with God, the Father, with our fellow man and even with our innermost selves. He has straightened out our lives. Don't wait to get right. Now, some people may think I'll just wait until the millennium to live a holy life. That's when the Lord will reign, isn't it? So that's when I'll let him make me perfect. Well, I have some exciting news for you. You don't have to wait. God is ready to make you perfect right now. God the Father demands an upright, holy life of his people. He expects them to be a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Titus 2, 14. God the Son died on the cross, so we will become those peculiar, holy people. He purified us by sacrificing his own body and blood on Calvary. See 1 John 1, 7. We need only confess our sin and accept his sacrifice to receive the righteousness he offers. God the Spirit keeps guiding us on the path of moral righteousness. When Paul rebuked the immortality of the Christian at Corneth, he said, Do you know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Hmm. 1 Corinthians 3.16 When the Spirit dwells within, He shows us how to keep our temple clean. It's not necessary for you to wait until the Lord Jesus returns before you get your moral life straightened out. In fact, it's downright j- dangerous, excuse me, to wait. You can live in God's righteousness now. And to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. James 4:17. The Lord is our righteousness. How Lindsay closes his classic book on prophecy. The late great planet earth 
with the reminder that none of us should wait to live as God has told us to. We should make it our aim to trust Christ to work in us a life of righteousness. We all grow in this, so don't get discouraged or forget that God accepts us as we are. He wants our hearts to be constantly set toward pleasing him and have faith to trust him to help us. Granted, none of us will be completely perfect until our rapture bodies go to heaven. But we can have the righteousness of God through Christ at this very moment. God expects us to have it because he expects his church, the family of all the saved, to be a glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Ephesians 5.27 We can have that kind of life only when we surrender to Jesus Christ. The Lord, our righteousness. And this does complete chapter 8. Stay tuned for chapter 9. The Lord of host. And it be at thy will. I will speak with you soon. Here on Palm Praise 2. So be well. Take care. Till next time. Later, y'all. Mm-hmm.